Hi, Dylan McElhatton here with Halogen Systems. Today we're going to introduce how to do a chlorine zero, how to do a fast chlorine calibration to chlorinated water, and how to do a delayed chlorine calibration in chlorinated water. So here I have one of our halogen low flange sensors running in some bottled tap water. Uh, for doing chlorine zeros, I recommend doing your chlorine zero in either bottled tap water or water that you've confirmed to have absolutely no chlorine residual in it. That can be either over neutralized water if you're in ballast water, um, or it can be just uh, raw processed water if you're in a wastewater or a drinking water plant. Um, you just want to make sure that this is chlorine free. You can confirm that by doing a DPD, or if you're incredibly confident, or if it's out of a bottle of water, um, you can do a chlorine zero on those as well. I'm doing a bottled water calibration today uh, for my chlorine zero. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and get started with the chlorine zero. I have my bottled water here that I know does not have any chlorine in it. I have my sensor running in it, adequately primed with the water flowing from the ejection port. So the first thing I'm gonna do is make it over to my display here. And as you can see, my sensor is not quite reading zero. We're reading 0 0.09. Before I do any sort of chlorine zero calibration, I wanna take a look at what our raw signal is. And our raw signal is our nanoamps, which is that upper left-hand value on the first down arrow screen. As you can see that that number is negative 110, which is an ideal chlorine zero for our drinking water firmware, our FW2000 version. For ballast water, that value might be a little bit higher just for some small differences in measurement method. Um, however, in both versions, we do not wanna see that value higher than 600 nanoamps. Um, a negative value between uh, negative 200, negative 250 is also acceptable. Um, however, much lower than that um, may indicate some sensor issues as well. So I have my sensor running. Um, my raw current looks good. My pH looks acceptable. 7.5 is approximately right. Um, Conductivity is low. All of these look good. So I'm feeling pretty comfortable um, initiating a chlorine zero right now. So I'm going to go to menu, calibration, chlorine menu, and I'm going to go to chlorine zero. Now you can get to chlorine zero with either the long menu active or just in our standard menu. So we're gonna hit chlorine zero and we're gonna get the confirmation is, is the sensor in zero? Basically we're asking, are you sure this does not have any chlorine in it? If you initiate a chlorine zero with chlorine present, um, we're going to have a lot of issues with accurate chlorine reporting because um, basically what we're trying to calculate is an offset. And if we do an offset with chlorine present, we're going to get a very bad calibration. If that happens, go ahead and just reset the sensor to factory defaults and then go through the chlorine zero calibration procedure again. So we'll start from the top. Menu, calibration, chlorine menu, chlorine zero, and yes, our sensor I know is chlorine free, so we're going to go ahead and hit yes and initiate that calibration. And we have a success. And our sensor is now reading zero. Now, we're gonna go ahead and move on to doing a chlorine calibration. So I'm going to go ahead, just for lab purposes, to just spike this with a little bit of chlorine so that we can do a calibration here. I recommend doing chlorine calibrations to whatever your process chlorine concentration is going to be. So if you're in the ballast water space, you would wanna do this calibration when you're ballasting, so when you're injecting chlorine, um, or when you're going through electrolysis and you're at your treatment concentration. Or if you're in the drinking water in industry, whatever you guys are boosting to, um, that is a good place to do your chlorine calibration as well and same thing in ballast water. To do a chlorine calibration, you're going to want to have a reliable reference measurement. Um, for us, we like to use a spectrophotometer. I have a DR1900 here that I'm going to use for demonstration purposes. Within our lab, we use a DR3900. Um, however, whatever you guys have in the field, it might be a pocket color colorimeter, like a DR300. Um, however, whatever you use, we're going to want to do three separate measurements and take the average of those three to calibrate our sensor. Um, 
it's very important is if we are doing a calibration, our reference measurement needs to be accurate. And that means doing replicates to ensure that every measurement that we're getting is accurate and reliable. Um, so we do triplicates and we're going to take the average of the three. If one of these varies by more than um, 20%, we're going to throw that one out as an outlier. If we have two measurements that match, we're going to use that measurement to calibrate too. So in this case, I've spiked with a little bit of chlorine. We're going to do a triplicate on the DR1900. Um, some places it might be easier to use your online reference meter, whether that's a CL17 or a CL10. Um, it might be easier to do that. However, this is always going to be the most accurate and reliable method. This is also the standard uh, method for chlorine measurement is by doing a DPD reaction and measuring it via a spectrophotometer. We have two ways of doing chlorine calibration. You can do a fast calibration or a delayed chlorine calibration. Um, the differences here between the two is a fast chlor um, chlorine calibration is going to calibrate to whatever the sensor is measuring at the time that you initiate that calibration. While delayed chlorine calibration, um, you'll see in this menu screen here, you have a take sample command. And what that's going to do, it's going to hold whatever the sensor is measuring at the time that you press take sample. Um, and then that's going to allow you to go ahead and take a water sample. Say if you are running our sensor in a process that's seeing some fluctuation in chlorine, um, we're gonna hit take sample, pull that water sample. It's gonna hold those sensor values and you can go do your DPD on that water. Um, you have about 10 minutes to do that. We have a 10 minute timer for that. Um, so that's the time that you're gonna wanna do delayed chlorine calibration. Generally, that's going to be the most accurate method. However, fast chlorine calibration is perfectly sufficient if you have stable chlorine within your system or if you're just doing the calibration in a beaker like this. So I'm gonna go ahead and start with a fast chlorine calibration. And the first thing I'm gonna do is pull my water samples. I'm going to pull three samples here. I use a calibrated pipette for this to make sure that I'm using accurate volumes each time for 10 milliliters. If you have a lab, your lab will have a standard procedure for measuring chlorine. So I'm gonna pull my three samples. I'm going to do a zero measurement. You're going to want to line up the diamond with the measurement arrow where the light is being reflected through our test. And we have our zero. I'm going to go ahead and open up my chlorine packets. And these are total DPD packets. If you have a free chlorine sensor, make sure that you're using the free chlorine packets. Um, there's a variety of packets out there, depending on what your spectrometer is, whether you're using a pocket colorimeter, whether you're using low range or high range packets as well. In my case, this uh, packet's only good from zero to two PPM. We have a little bit of squish room over the top. It looks like I've gone over a little bit. Uh, but for demonstration purposes, this will be perfectly sufficient. Agitate for 20 seconds and let the reaction go for three minutes. All right, and our three minute countdown is up. So we're going to go ahead and measure our three samples and put it into the spectrophotometer and press read. So our first reading is 1.4. Our second is 142. And third is 14 again. So I'm going to go ahead and calibrate to 1.4. So as you can see, our chlorine is not 1.4. So we're going to go ahead and go to menu. And then we can go to either fast cal here, or we can find it within the calibration and chlorine menu. And go to fast chlorine cal. I'm going to input my chlorine value, which was 1.4, and hit select, and get it calibrating, and then success. When you come back to the menu, our sensor should be reading 1.4, so we know that that calibration is accurate. 
Next, I'll show you how to do a delayed chlorine calibration. So you're going to want to dump out your samples if you're doing this back to back. However, you do, if you're doing this in process, you would have your sensor running currently, um, fresh sample vials, and you would go take your sample. To take your sample, before you go pull the water from the system, you're going to go ahead and go to Menu, Calibration, Chlorine Menu, and then Delayed Chlorine Cal. You're going to press Delayed Chlorine Cal, and you're going to hit Take Sample, and that's going to start a 10-minute timer for you to go take your process sample. So say this sensor is installed 100 feet away in the engine room or your display is 100 feet away from where your sensor is, um, you need to go pull your sample somewhere representative of what the sensor is seeing. I recommend if you have a flow cell, just pull it right from the outlet port of the flow cell. Um, if you're running a wet tap or if you're running um, anything that's in the pipe, uh, pull from the closest sample port to the sensor, um, preferably right after where the sensor is installed. Um, you'll pull that sample, then you'll do the DPD the same way that I just showed you. You'll measure your three values, take the average of the three, and you'll come to our calibration menu here. And then you're going to click select on the DPD level. And we're going to calibrate to what our sample DPD readings are. So in this case, we want to calibrate to 1.44. and hit select, and then hit save now to initiate the calibration. Now again, this is going to calibrate to what the sensor was reading when we first hit take sample. Versus with fast calibration, we are calibrating to whatever the sensor is reading immediately in that moment. Our sensor updates every 60 seconds, um, which is fairly quick compared to a lot of online DPD systems. So if you're doing a DPD sample, obviously it takes three minutes, so that's a chance for this sensor to get three different measurements from the time that you pulled that sample. That's the benefit of doing the delayed calibration. And you can see our calibration was successful here. We're at 1.44 and our measurements are looking good. So those are the three ways to calibrate chlorine on our sensor. Chlorine zero, fast chlorine calibration, and delayed chlorine calibration. Thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, go ahead and email us at tech at halogensys.com.